Th yeah. Those are, the, I think, the two fundamental questions that we sometimes don't ask about the creation. But w w we get sort of sidetracked in how it was done and, and lots of other questions like that. But the fundamental questions that the scriptures are interested in are the two that you just mentioned. What's the purpose behind the creation and who's behind all of this? And this is a very inner, uh, this is a very active God. This was not done by remote control. This was not left to chance. This is God acting and he's acting for a specific purpose. That's really that, good. I like that, that. that purpose is, is defined quite clearly in verse 39. This is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. The creation of this world, the creation of this universe is a uh, purposeful event to help us. You can think of it as God's university for his children uh, mm -hmm. to help them to become yeah. like him. Interesting. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the scriptures spend a good deal of time uh, talking about the why. Uh, the Book of Mormon, uh, our Old Testament, New Testament, Doctrine and Covenants, we have a lot of insights into the why. The how, we have very little information. Mm -hmm. It's still an important question, and the Lord deals with it a little bit in section 101, verses 32 through 33. Let me, let me just read that, because I think it's, it's an important little passage of Scripture. Yea, verily I say unto you, in that day when the Lord shall come, he shall reveal all things, things which have passed, and hidden things which no man knew, things of the earth by which it was made, and the purpose and the end thereof. In other words, at some point, he's going to give us the how. We're going to, we're going to get that information. Uh, but, but just he, not right now. He really wants us to focus on the why exactly. and the who, exactly. the whom. That, guess, that's the, the intent of the scriptures. Yeah, come, come to know him. Yeah because that's the purpose of the creation of the earth is to become like him to to come to possess that which he possesses that's his great power is to give to his children that which he possesses and and that's the i guess that's the the purpose behind all of the scriptures is to help us to come to know who it is that we are aiming to become like our heavenly parent well genesis chapter 1 verse 1 which would be moses chapter 2 verse 1 propels us right into the account an account of the creation uh, and of course um, the, the creation the doctrinal concept of the creation um, has been likened to one of three pillars of eternity I think it was Elder McConkie who kind of brought that into our vocabulary the creation the fall and the atonement are the three pillars of, of eternity doctrinally. Let's, uh, let's read a few verses in Genesis uh, chapter 1. Uh, Terry, could I get you to read verses 1 through 5 for us as we begin our discussion of the creation? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. What are some of the things that you note immediately as we're uh, propelled into this, or thrust into this account of the creation? What are some concepts that, that jump out at you? I, I think the first thing that jumps out at me, verse 1, in the beginning God created. <clears throat> now, sometimes that's misunderstood to mean that all of this was brought into existence from nothing, creation ex nihilo. But in fact, the Hebrew term from which the word created is taken, bara, literally means what? To, to form, to form or shape, or shape, to organize out of pre-existing stuff, pre-existing matter. And so we come to understand that matter already exists and God is taking his uh, his great powers to form them, to shape them into this organized earth. What else What else in those first five well, verses? And I would add to that that, that God is an active participant yeah. in this. Yeah. It's yeah. not that he, you know, somehow sat back at the end, waved a magic wand and, and set up the laws and just let everything unroll, but rather he's, he's there intimately involved in, in all aspects of the creation to ensure that, that it fulfills the measure of its creation. I, I like that. And the, and the narrative itself validates that. Just looking at the verses, verse 3, and God said, 
verse 4, and God saw, verse 5, and God called, verse 6, and God said. Those are active verbs. Yeah, God right, is yeah. acting. Yeah. He's, well, he's and, intimately and involved after those, here. After that action, those <clears throat> action words, we get this phrase, it was good. What do you suppose is being articulated there? Why do we need the little phrase, it is good? One, one would suppose that if God is behind all of this, of course it's going to be good. So what do you think Moses is driving at when he puts that phrase in there? Well, that's an interesting question because some people read that and say, how can God be surprised that it was good? It almost reads that way. God said, let there be light, and there was light, and oh, that's good. Yeah. But that's not really the intent. I think Abraham chapter 418 explains what that phrase, it is good, means. Um, there, as the creation is going on, and as, well, as it's kind of summed up in chapter 4, verse 18, it says, and the gods watched those things that they had ordered until they obeyed. Or I guess we could say, or until they were good. He, they made yeah. certain that they were good. So maybe a way to rephrase that is not to say, and God saw that it was good, but rather that God saw to it that it was good. He made yeah. certain that this was doing all that he designed it to do. Excellent. So uh, a good thing for me to do would be to take Abraham chapter 4, verse 18, and just mark it as a cross-reference right next to that phrase, it is good, because I really like that explanation. That's, that's terrific. Okay. Uh, what about this business in verse 5? It's evening and morning, day one, or the first day. That, that's a little bit different than my conception of what days are. Well, I, I think it, it, it certainly reflects the, the ancient uh, Hebrew concept of uh, days. For, for e even today, for, for Jews, uh, the day begins at sundown. Yeah. Uh, and so it's evening first and then day uh, for a day. So it, it's simply a cultural bias, if you will, uh, reflected in, in the way that God is explaining it to Moses. If he were revealing it to a prophet today, he might indeed say it was day and night, yeah. because that's the way we think of it. Very good. You know, uh, another way to look at it, too, is we're talking now about creative periods. And and this evening and morning is the beginning and the ending of a creative period. Now, how, how long is that creative period? I don't know. Um, they don't have to be equal. Uh, they don't have to be equal. Yeah. The, yeah. This, this first creative period that we call the first day, I have no idea how long that lasted. And it may have lasted longer than the second creative period and okay. so forth and so on. Abraham uses a different word for it, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. and it was the first time, time. First time. 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 Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I think that, that uh, 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 another way of looking at it as well is that uh, it, it's not necessarily broken up in, into to periods where God is doing you know this and then he says yeah. okay I'm done I'm, I'm going to do this but rather uh, these are all things that, that are going on in a continuous process some of them even overlapping yeah. and, and, and that the, the period is, is almost an artificial thing that you know, God is talking to Moses or Abraham and saying, and, and this is something I did, and this is something I did, and, and hence uh, the, the, the uh, breaking up into periods for our, our, our better understanding, that, that it's a continuous process. Well, well, you know from other scriptures that time is measured only unto man. And I think uh, God is trying to give us an appreciation for what he's doing and what's going on, but we have finite minds, and we can't comprehend all that's going on. In fact, I'm not even sure that we have the whole story here. 